Hello. What's your name? Wait a minute. First of all, what's the matter? He stop. has an attitude. What do you mean stop? stop. What do you okay, mean stop? I'm going to go this way. You're going right over there. Yes, you no, do I'm have to say something to me. Get in the car. Get my back in the car. You got custody, bro. Welcome to the U.S. Corrupt Cops channel on YouTube, where we expose the truth about police corruption. Today we confront a troubling issue, the assault on pregnant women by corrupt cops. Support us by subscribing, liking, and sharing the videos to combat injustice and demand fairness. If you like this video, press 1. A federal lawsuit was recently filed in Kentucky and the body camera footage was released depicting a young pregnant woman being confronted by a police officer in her own driveway over a broken taillight. Let's take a look, and then I'll share my thoughts on whether her constitutional rights were violated. Can the police simply pull into your driveway after you've parked and detain you in your yard, let alone use force on you? What's that? What's that serious for a taillight? I'm coming to pull you over. What's that like? Okay, do you want to get sided today? Because you're already you're off on already, a bad path. You're already mad. I do. ID. I don't have one with me. I have to go in the house and get it. You got your ID? Yeah. Okay. That don't make no sense. Is that why you pulled us over? Yes, you know it is. Yes, that's why I turned okay. around on you. And you. Yeah, I just bought 45. this tape. I believe it's going to be a Mitchum trailer parking. By the way, that doesn't fix it. So. Okay, well, it still works. This What's your name? It doesn't fix it. What it do you mean? Not. You have to get the red tape does not fix it. Does that make sense? It does not work. I'm telling you. I haven't work. got. We haven't got. What's your name? How long? What's your name? Wait a minute. First of all, what's the matter? He stop. has an attitude. What do you mean stop? stop. What do you okay, mean stop? Go over. Have to say you're going right over there. Yes, you no, do I'm have to say something to me. No, nope, you're staying right here. Why do I have to stay? Because I'm telling you to. You don't have to talk to me like that. I'm, Why I'm you telling, this stuff? I am telling you to stay right here. Don't even say nothing else. And I'm not saying nothing else because he. What's your name? No, I watched you get out of the driver's seat. You are driving. What's your name? If you do not ID me, okay. if you do not ID yeah, yourself, right. okay. you're going that's to jail. Does that make sense? Ooh, if you do not Alasia ID yourself. Alasia Bowie is my name. Okay, go ahead and turn around. In Kentucky's McCracken County, Deputy John Hayden allegedly threatened to use a taser on a pregnant 24-year-old woman named Alicia Bowie. He supposedly forcefully pushed her face into a police cruiser and pressed her to the ground using his knees with full force, despite her being six months pregnant at the time. The deputy claimed in his citation that Bowie refused to identify herself, but body camera footage contradicts this, showing her complying and providing her name. Nevertheless, Deputy Hayden's report states there was a brief struggle, resulting in Bowie being forcefully placed on the ground. Both Bowie and her mother were arrested and charged with assaulting a police officer, though these charges are still pending. After a complaint was lodged, McCracken County Sheriff Ryan Norman stated that the Sheriff's Department conducted an internal investigation, finding no breaches of department policies or procedures, but there was no mention of any infringement on constitutional rights. A few minutes later, after both women had been arrested, Hayden then reattaches his body camera. However, his audio cuts off twice while he explains to other deputies what happened. Later, Deputy Hayden's conversation with the jail nurse and the nurse's evaluation of Miss Bowie are also conveniently not audible on the body camera. Note that when the women were upset and verbalizing their displeasure during the arrest, the deputy left the audio running. But at other times, he apparently concealed his own audio. I'm 10 foot 10 times 2. I gotta find my personal stuff. Oh, we've dealt with them. I need her in the car. Put her in that car over. I got I've got one in my back seat now. She's I, I've got it now. I just gotta figure out how to do it. Yeah, I'm good. I just I, both of them fighting. What happened? 
The scenario describes a situation where Deputy Hayden chose not to take a pregnant woman named Miss Bowie for medical treatment after she was injured. Instead, a jail nurse refused to admit her, and she was eventually taken to the emergency room. The criticism is that law enforcement should prioritize kindness and rationality, considering the well-being of all involved. It questions whether certain actions taken by officers were necessary, and emphasizes the importance of empathy and careful decision-making. The analysis also discusses legal complexities surrounding traffic stops initiated on private property, and suggests that officers should carefully consider the justification for such actions. Overall, it advocates for a more compassionate and sensible approach in law enforcement. You know, police frequently gripe about not wanting to act as social workers. Well, this recently released footage by the Sheriff of Los Angeles County depicts a police officer, or at least one of them, attempting to separate a baby from its mother. And how does he do it? He punches her. Do you want me to grab the baby or are you going to hand the baby over nicely? Okay. I don't want to have to snatch her and have my partners grab your arms. That's the last thing I okay. want to do. We're trying not to do okay. that. If you don't want to do that, then why won't you just let it get us? Because we're going to okay. take the baby one way or another, okay? And I don't want to be rude about it. You guys were in a car, driving without your lights on. No one's a licensed driver. His, no one life, has his lights are off. There's something wrong I mean, with the, it. And no one has car seats in the car. What would you have done if you were stranded? I would have called the sheriff's station and said, hey, look, I'm stranded. I need someone a ride. I, 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 I was not aware that sheriff's station give rides. It's not that we give rides, but if someone is stranded with a baby, last thing we want is them to get in a car without a car seat. We're trying to do what's best for your children right now. And forcefully taking the child from you is not what's best. My baby has never been in danger. There has never been any type of anything. Your baby anything. was in danger tonight just by being in this car without being in a car seat driving around the town. No, I'm not doing this. Other two are in the car. I swear to God on, on yeah. everything I love, bro. Y'all not taking my baby from the horse. Y'all gonna have to shoot me dead to take my baby from my horse. What, bro? Hey, get this over the corner. Let's hold the baby. Is it easier to separate a baby from its mother by punching the mother in the face? Sure. Is it constitutional? No, why? because it constitutes a violent use of force without any necessity or legitimate reason to do so. Attach to me, bro, please. But listen, <laughs> at this point... She has a car seat. Okay, Can you please listen and hear me out, please? Please, okay. please, go ahead. Go ahead, talk to me. Listen. Okay, I'm listening. I can get a car seat for her. I, I, I can have yeah, someone I, I'm listening to you. What led up to it? Because why did she tell us that we could take our baby? We can have somebody. Don't please don't take my, take my baby. Don't make this any harder than what it already is. Why is it that she told us that we could find somebody to come pick us up and come get the kids and put them in car seats? He has a car seat. He can go home. All I need to do is go get mine. I swear to God. We didn't realize that you guys had that many kids. You guys each have a kid in the back seat. You've seen them when you flash the light. Okay. You've seen her baby. You've seen mine, and you've seen. Several deputies eventually seized the child and placed handcuffs on the woman while she continued screaming. You want me to grab the baby, or are you going to hand the baby over nicely? Okay. I can have somebody come get her. No, no okay. we're not going to do that. I don't want to have to snatch her and have my partners grab your arms. That's the last thing I okay, want to do. We're trying not to do okay. that. If you don't want to do that, then why won't you just let it Because yes, we're going to take the baby you. one way or another, okay? And I don't want to be rude about it. So if you have guys have kids, then why don't I, you guys understand? That's why we're doing what we're doing. I've literally never personal. been in trouble. I've never had a warrant. I don't have anything. Why can I just save my baby? All right, you ready? No, 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 no. Please okay. let me hold on to it. Please do that. Listen. She's gonna grab the baby, and if you do not let her take the baby, they will hold you, hold you and handcuff you. Can we speak, please? I am no, speaking. Are speaking right? okay. You guys are surrounding me, please. Okay. I, have been... I want to talk like reasonable. I don't want. I, okay. This is not reasonable. You guys are all surrounding me. I don't like that. So I will tell you this. I'll give you the option. You can either hand her the baby, or you can walk over to that car right there and place the baby in the car seat for us. If you have a car seat, then why can't you just drive us home? We're not at this point. You've already committed a crime, okay? I've How was I going to get home? I was going to have to walk with her regardless. It's not my fault. I got stranded. The person Someone else should have been called. Can you listen? I am listening. I don't have anybody. Okay. 
I'm literally like on my I'll own. I was dropped off. I, I sympathize with that. I am. Why, so why are you taking my baby? Because what led us up to this point? What led up to the point? You guys were in a car, driving without your lights on. No one's a licensed driver. His, no one lights, has his lights are off. There's something wrong and with the, it. And no one has car seats in the car for the children. That she is has a, big, a car seat. That is a big safety concern. She has a car seat. Not in this car. It is in the car because he popped the trunk it's in, in the trunk. The they were not in the car seat. It's in the trunk. Hey, the child needs to be in a car seat. That is an issue. So if we wouldn't have, they wouldn't have picked me up and I would have been kidnapped or sex trafficked, then what happened? Then what would have happened? That didn't happen. No, that didn't but happen. I'm just saying that happened. But at this point, we've gone in circles. We've gone around and around and around. So how can you guys say that, oh, you have kids, but you don't understand? What would you have done if you were stranded? I would have called the sheriff's station and said, hey, look, I'm stranded. I need someone a ride. I, 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 I was not aware that sheriff's station give rides. It's not that we give rides, but if someone is stranded with a baby, last thing we want is them to get in a car without a car seat. And now okay, that baby's but secure we're literally and safe. not that far from our house. Okay, that's, we're not at that point, okay? We've already talked about that. So why okay, did so if are you, you listen, but my thing is, she, to me. She, can you listen to me? I have been listening, but you are not listening to us. Okay? We have explained everything to you. You're not listening to what we're saying. We're trying to do what's best for your children right now. And forcefully taking the child from you is not what's best. Taking but my if, child from me is not what's best. Okay, but if you will not let us do our job and save our children. If you guys children, could do your job, you would understand that we have three small children. And if, point, you can, if you can just let us get okay. our kids home, we're done. it wouldn't be a problem. Okay. You're not even we're listening to me. I am listening. You're and not. I have Okay, we're done talking about it this. Would be so what we're going to do just, now? Can you listen to me, please? I have been listening this whole time. No, you're not, because if I you were listening been. and you had children, you would understand. I do understand. And I feel like what was best at that point was to just try and get my kid home. That's it. Okay. My baby has never been in danger. There's never been any type of Your baby anything. was in danger tonight just by being in this car without being in a car seat, driving around the town. That was what we weren't was, driving was around the town. For. I was just trying to get home. The baby was in danger, traveling in a motor vehicle without being in a child seat. Okay, and they all knew that. She shined. They both yeah, shined the light. That. She seen her baby. Okay. They seen mine, and they seen the other baby. Y'all we're, knew we had three done, babies in the car. We're done with this conversation. It hasn't been going anywhere. You because aren't listening you to what guys I'm telling aren't you. trying to right, understand. Are you going to give up the baby nicely no, or am I going to have to grab and they're going to grab your hands? I don't want to do that, but okay. those are your two options. Can you please just listen to me? We have. Okay. Please. Okay. She's going to grab the baby. Can you guys okay. wait, wait, no, listen, no, please, please, please. 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 Deputies swiftly encircled the woman cradling the other baby, obstructing the body camera's view of the impending events. However, the woman's screams can be heard just moments before a deputy seemingly punches her twice. No, I'm not doing this. Other two are in. I'm, I'm, I'm Other two are I swear to God on, on everything I love, bro, y'all not taking my baby from the horse. Y'all gonna have to shoot me dead to take my baby from my horse. Y'all gonna have to shoot me dead to quit me. I'm not about to let you take my baby on my life. I'm not about to. Oh, my God. 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 O
Then she's handcuffed. Y'all play me, bro! <laughs> Get that on record! That <laughs> punched me, bro! Hey, he broke my <laughs> shit, bro! Oh! <laughs> 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 record that <laughs> bro! They wrong! They wrong! They wrong! They wrong! They wrong! In July 2022, there was an incident where law enforcement forcibly separated a baby from its mother by punching her in the face. This action violated the Constitution, specifically the Fourth Amendment's principles outlined in Graham v. Connor, as it was deemed a violent use of force without a legitimate reason. There was no evidence of an immediate safety threat to justify such actions. The focus of concern is on the violent handling of the situation rather than the separation itself, raising questions about law enforcement's approach. The incident only recently came to light when a newly elected sheriff initiated an internal investigation and referred the matter to the FBI for potential criminal prosecution. The disciplinary actions against the involved officer have not been disclosed yet, but it appears that steps are being taken to address the situation. Updates on the case are awaited. On August 9, 2018, Deputy Kenneth Steelman from the Fannin County Sheriff's Office answered a report regarding stray dogs. Hello. You got an aggressive dog? Yeah, about five minutes before you pulled up, they took him in. After conversing with the complainants, Deputy Steelman discovered that the dogs had supposedly escaped numerous times, displayed aggression, and attacked someone's calf from behind. Additionally, he found out that one of the complainants had connections with the local chief of police and had reported the complaint directly to him. Call you. <laughs> okay. Let me go call him and say, I don't have a clue who called. I just told you you had a dog. William Robinson called chief of police in Trenton that oh, time. Oh, okay. And yeah. he's the one I called him because I couldn't make contact with y'all right at that time. Yeah. So I called him and asked him what he called. Okay. Deputy Steelman proceeded to the residence where the dogs resided. The owner was absent, but their granddaughter and newborn were there. Deputy Steelman conversed with the granddaughter and discovered that the dog was a three-month-old pit bull puppy. Hello. Hello, I'm Deputy Steelman, Fannie County Sheriff's Department. Okay. We got some complaints that you got some aggressive dogs. We have an aggressive dog? You have some aggressive dogs. We have a pit puppy who has never bit anyone. She just has a very aggressive bark. Okay. She's three months old. Okay. Why aren't they on their property? Because they get out from the backyard and go underneath the house and get out and run around. Okay, that's gonna have to stop. Okay, Did, can you ask them if uh, they if my dog bit them? Uh, today, no, but apparently I'm fixing to go talk to somebody. Apparently one of them bit on the back of a leg. When? I do not know, but I haven't talked to the man yet. Okay. But, uh, could, um, is there any way I can see the dogs? No, you can't come in my house. My parents are at home. Okay. What's your name, ma'am? Joy. Upon request, Joy provides her name, date of birth, address, and phone number, while Deputy Steelman explains her responsibilities as a dog owner. I'm responsible for any damages that the, if that's incurred, mm -hmm. and because uh, this is, uh, I have to go back through the call notes, but apparently they've called on them several times. Yeah, those people across the street have called on them once before. Okay. Um, because they're saying they're aggressive, then you can be held criminally responsible. Okay. If they get out by somebody or do damage. Okay. Okay. The interaction ended there, and Deputy Steelman should have just continued walking away from the house to go about his day. But at the last moment, he decided to reiterate that she would be in trouble if they kept getting calls. With his back turned as he walked away, Joy went back inside to put her baby down. She shut the door to keep the dogs inside. If we continue to get calls, then the SPCA will get involved. And that's... I'm going to put 
of my baby daddy. Can you please go? Do not. Turn around and run back inside like that. Um, I you came to put my baby down. Let me finish. I came to put my baby down, sir. And I came to put my baby down. Can you continue to get so calls. Do I need to call my parents so you can talk to them? I'm fixing to take you to jail. For what? Because you want to finish. You're in interrupting you me. You can't take me to jail for not letting you talk. I'm not yes, doing anything can. wrong. For what? Because I am here because the dogs. Okay, and I knew what you were here for, but I came to take my baby down. After unlawfully entering the private residence, despite being explicitly told he wasn't permitted to enter. Wait, I can see the dogs? No, you can't come in my house. My parents are home. Okay. Deputy Steelman holds the door open, letting the dogs in question slip away, as he carries on lecturing Joy about the consequences of allowing them to escape. Don't, you came in to slam the door. No, I came in to slam my baby down and make sure they get in out of the house. You continue to get calls. Stop. The so, SPCA is going to come out. Okay, season, thank you. Can I get my dogs, be, please? You're going to be charged for it. Can I get my dogs, please? Do you completely understand yes, what I'm I saying? There's not going to be. I can hear there's what you're not saying. Be any I'm not surprises. dumb. I can hear you. Can okay. you please stop there's and get off be, my property? There's not going to be any surprises can in the future. Can you please call mom? Can you get off my property, please? There's get off my property. You have no reason to be here and keep trying to harass me. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm trying to set my baby down and get my dogs back. Can you call mom, please? Excuse me, sir. Can you Could please you go ahead get and out of send my me doorway? Either, uh, send me Dude. a sergeant or a lieutenant to my location, please. Uh. Yes, I have my phone. Can you please get out of my way go so and I can go get ahead my Go ahead and call dog. your mom. Thank you. Can you please get out of my way no. so I can get my dogs? Yes, can you get my baby, please? Oh, my goodness. I don't know why. There's always problems with y'all. Y'all get... Ooh. Can you please go set him down? Thank you. Can you please move? No. Then I'll go out in my back. Can you please... Which one's got outside? Oh, my gosh. I have a teacup dog that I need to get. Can you please tell this cop to get the off my property and stop trying to stand in my doorway and cause problems. He said that he called, he came over here because he, the dogs got out and I said okay. Then he wants to slam, uh, bang on the door and push it open after nobody told him he could come inside my house. So can you get out of my house? No. I know my rights. Get out of no. my house. No. Mom. No. Get out of my house. Keep it up. Hey, I'll be there in a minute. Get out of my house. Keep it up. Get out of my house. I don't even, I'm not doing anything wrong. Get out of my house. Here, my up. mom is talking to you. Get out of my house. This is Deputy Stillman. Sir, why are you in my house? Because your daughter, as I was trying to explain what was going to happen, if these dogs continue to run free, slammed the door, and when I went to knock on it, the door opened. Okay, sir, you, and sir, I'm, I'm glad Please you have a search warrant. You are not supposed to be in my house. And I told him that, and then he's trying to say he's going to okay, take me to jail for some shit. I'm not going to stand here. Okay. Have a good day. I didn't go. I, 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 Come here. No. Come here. Just leave me alone. Deputy Steelman seizes Joy's arms and neck, employing physical force for the ensuing eight minutes to restrain and choke her. Okay, shut up. Additional officers arrive unaware that Steelman was the one who initiated physical aggression and was the sole individual involved in unlawful behavior by handcuffing Joy. Eventually, Joy's mother and a supervisor arrive at the scene. Deputy Steelman falsely accused Joy of assaulting him, which resulted in her being wrongly arrested and charged. Despite clear evidence showing otherwise, the prosecutor chose not to pursue charges against Steelman and the sheriff's office took no action against him. Joy's family filed a lawsuit against Steelman, the sheriff, and Fannin County, alleging various violations including wrongful arrest, excessive force, and retaliation for exercising free speech. The court rejected the defendant's claim of qualified immunity, stating that Steelman's actions were illegal. Eventually, a settlement of $350,000 was reached through mediation. This case underscores the importance of being cautious in interactions with law enforcement, as they may not always follow or respect the law. On January 16, 2023, Latinka Hancock experienced a dispute at a local McDonald's when she discovered that the extra slice of cheese she paid for was missing from her sandwich. 
Despite the manager initially agreeing to correct the mistake, an employee insisted she pay for the additional cheese again, leading to a heated argument. Eventually, Miss Hancock received a refund for her order, but the situation escalated. Butler Township Police Department officers, Sergeant Todd Stanley and Officer Tim Zellers, were called to escort Miss Hancock out of the establishment. Frustrated, she explained the entire incident to the officers in the hope of finding some resolution. Hi, did you have a bad day inside? Oh, sir. I went through the drive through earlier. Okay. She refused to take my dollar to give me 30 cents after I paid it for extra cheese. Okay. There was a young lady who was very nice, by the way, before I introduced, got introduced to this lady in the burgundy. Okay. She asked the lady in the burgundy shirt to remake my sandwich. She comes up to the desk wanting me to pay her another 30 cents. So 49 plus 30 plus 30. For what when there's, I'm not even getting enough pieces of cheese. You only put one on here when I already paid 49 cents for the extra piece of cheese. So now you're charging me 60 cents more. So then she got an attitude because I asked her for a refund and called the police because she didn't want to give me back my money. And I told them I'm in a black truck and I'm waiting. Okay. She finally gave me the refund literally eight seconds before I got in the car and started it up. The problem was, all I wanted was to be remade with an extra piece of cheese. I completely she started understand. screaming at me, and I'm just like, well, ma'am, she explained it to you. Why won't you go make it? Well, you need to pay me 30 cents. I said, the lady that just came and got the paper already took the 30 cents on top of the 49. Why would I give another 30 cents, which makes it 60 plus 49 cents? So they've made you whole? No. They haven't made well, it. Well, I mean, yeah, she gave me my money back, so I'm gonna go somewhere else. But okay. the problem was, she should have just remade it like the lady asked her. I came all the way back here to get my sandwich. Obviously, I wanted to go home with it. I didn't understand where she got confused at after the lady already said, yeah, just go ahead and remake it, put a piece of cheese in the middle. She started getting all extra, wanted me to pay her again. No, ma'am, it doesn't work like that. I paid now three times for only one piece of cheese that I still didn't even get. Okay. So she gave me a refund. I'm leaving. She started screaming at me, telling me to have a good day and not to come back here. And I said, I won't. So you didn't, you, you didn't say anything. You was a complete angel. I and know, I'm getting I information. You're getting disorderly. I sure did. Okay. All right. I did. So here's what's going to happen. You've been made whole, right? You got your I'm money leaving. back. You pulled up. I didn't yep. want you to have so, to chase so me. So here's what street. we're going to do. They want you trespass. They don't. Who listen, cares? Just listen. I know. It doesn't mean that. It's a McDonald's. They don't they want you. There's do one right. on every corner. Customers are right. Thank you. Okay. In the recorded footage, Officer Zellers reported that Miss Hancock had been flagged by the McDonald's establishment due to disorderly conduct. When questioned regarding the incident, Miss Hancock admitted her behavior might have crossed a line, but justified it by alleging mistreatment by a staff member, framing her actions as a reaction. Moreover, Officer Zellers mentioned that McDonald's had requested her to be banned from the premises. During the interrogation, Officer Zellers probed Miss Hancock about her vehicle, inquiring if the license plate was registered under her information. However, as this wasn't the case, Officer Zellers demanded identification, either a driver's license number or personal details. Miss Hancock adamantly refused, unwilling to disclose her identity. In response, Officer Zellers suggested that Miss Hancock was needlessly complicating the situation, subtly hinting at the possibility of arrest, which further intensified the confrontation. Ultimately, Miss Hancock reluctantly provided her last name, yet remained visibly agitated by the entire ordeal. I won't come back. Does this car come back to you? No, it does not. Okay, can I get a driver's license number or something from you or name no, and date of birth? I don't have one. Well, I'm going to issue a trespass notice and I have to fill out a piece of paper. I okay? can care less. Okay, what you're I just do. need some information. No. But you I do. You have a description, you can use that, but I don't know. No, so I'm filling out a paper. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Fill it out. It's going to have your information on it so that you can't come back on the property. Who wants to? It's a McDonald's. I understand like you said, that. One but I have to there. serve you I'm as a not, newspaper. No, I'm not about to give you my info. Sorry. Well, you are I because it's a crime back. if you don't. No, it's Because you're trespassing. The crime is her being nasty and won't make my sandwich the way I paid for it. It's my money. Okay. That's nasty. You're going to make it more difficult than it has to be. If you arrest me, I promise you, you're going to have a problem. I, I won't have a problem. Yes, you will. No. No. I will. Ma'am, ma'am, we're just trying to identify not you to give you a piece of paper. Oh, okay, that's it. You have to identify what? yourself. So many McDonald's out here. Because For we, what? We've heard explained. She it was to the road ass bitch. Damn. Damn. Stop. 
Stop. Bring yours down. Stop. Because I'm done. Fine. Stop. I'm going to go a piece of paper. That's for it. For what? Over a sandwich that she Criminal, refused to make? Are you going to stop and listen? Who's going to go in there and make her remake my sandwich? Stop. Nobody. If you don't stop, you're going to end up going to jail. Stop. Hancock, H-A-N-C-O-C-K, write it down so Calm I can Calm down. Go. No, because you're not about to act like no, that over a sandwich stop. she didn't make right. Stop. You don't need to go to jail over this. Exactly. Okay, so That's calm what I'm down. Like over a you're, making, you're making us your enemy. I'm ready. I gave we, you my info. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I said my last name. Damn. Despite Miss Hancock providing her last name, Officer Zellers demanded additional information, such as her first name and date of birth, insinuating that he intended to issue a criminal trespass notice. Miss Hancock feeling the encounter was unwarranted, declined to provide further details. In response, Officer Zellers threatened to arrest her for failure to identify, escalating the situation. Over a Miss burger that she Miss didn't even make right. Miss that I traveled way far Are you for. going to listen to me? What's your first name? The easiest thing to do is just give us your info. We give, a trust. we give you a piece of paper and you don't come I back. Don't, no, then you're free you to leave. Don't I'm not coming back. So we have to serve you with a criminal will. trespass notice. No, you don't. Yes, by law, no, we do. Just want okay, to then we're going to arrest you. Then we're going to arrest you. No, you're not. You're to identify. No, you're then not. Then identify yourself. No. Yes. For what? Over I a sandwich? Stop. She didn't identify, identify herself. Identify yourself or we'll have to arrest you. Now stop. In Ohio, three laws address criminal trespass, all prohibiting unauthorized entry on private property. Ohio Revised Code 2921.29 requires individuals in public places to disclose their identity to law enforcement when reasonably suspected of criminal activity. A debate arises about whether Ms. Hancock was legally obligated to reveal her identity. However, the situation escalates when Officer Zellers arrests her for failure to identify leading to a physical altercation during which Sergeant Stanley resorts to excessive force by repeatedly striking Miss Hancock in the face, an action deemed unwarranted and unnecessary. Over a yes, over a sandwich. So you're making you're a bad decision. You're missing every day, though. But you're coming for me over a burger? Y'all, it's too much. You're not leaving too until you identify yourself. Right. You don't get the. You better calm down. I'm not giving you nothing. I already said it. Okay. You're under arrest. No, I'm not. Back. Put no, your I'm hands not. behind your back. No, I'm not. You are under arrest for failure to identify. Don't put your hands. Okay, my last name is Hancock. Put, I already told hands. you that. Put I already told you that. Behind your back. No, I don't want to. For real. It's Latika. I'm telling you. Why would you do that? Okay, I'm saying okay. Your hands back. You're gonna get paid. Okay. Yeah. Help. I'm thinking time. I'm gonna face the car. Oh my God. Why would you let me? Look at my face! Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at my mouth? Oh my god! That's, that's, that's alright, she's there. I know, I'm just gonna have to go inside. Look at my face! Why are you looking at me? I didn't even hit you! Well, you didn't need to put That's why you don't want to break. Get your shoe. 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 Ms. Hancock got upset and raised her voice during an encounter with the cops, but she didn't get violent. However, Sergeant Stanley went overboard and threw punches, resulting in visible injuries like a busted lip, loose teeth, a closed head injury, and a back injury for Miss Hancock. Body camera footage showed her crying and denying any reason for the force used. Despite her objections, emergency services were called, and she was put in the back of a police car. I'm bad again, Reverend. I'm sorry. Uh, didn't have to even be this way. Can I just speak to No, you're going to jail. Come on. Please, can I go home? Come on. Please. I'm okay. My name is Latika. Latika, it didn't have to be this way, Latika. It didn't have to be this way. I, I want to go home. <sighs> okay, okay. My mouth. Yeah. Y'all give people stuff. You gotta call an ambulance. I can't. Can you see this? Excuse me, sir. Stop, stop and listen. Stop and listen. Stop and listen. Do you have any guns and knives on you? 
Do I have a what? Guns or knives on you? No. My lip feels like it's busted or something. It is. We're gonna you. But I mean, like, is my skin on my lip hanging? Because it feels no. like it. Nope. <laughs> my lip is busted, sir. Call like 310. Can you start a medic? I don't have no Not, not an emergency. <laughs> Ma'am, it didn't even have to be this way. I want to go, please. You're going. No, you, you brought it to this. Sit down until the medic gets here to see you. I don't you. want to go. You don't have a choice. You just caused us to use but force you, against you. No, but you, you punched me on did your you, own will. No, it's because you were resisting. You. you don't have to. I didn't resist. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I'm a female. Look at my face. It's pants. all resisting. It don't matter what sex you are. In the car. Stop arguing. This is not a debate. Okay, okay, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to go. Sir, okay, tell him to stop because it hurts. I'm going to. Why are you so like this over a sandwich? Close the door. You f No. Okay. Sergeant Stanley said he hit Miss Hancock because she resisted arrest, but she denied it and was visibly upset about what she saw as excessive force. While her car was being searched, they found alcohol, and Sergeant Stanley accused her of being drunk. She explained the alcohol presence without being intoxicated. Despite her complaints about excessive force, Sergeant Stanley insisted it was necessary, downplaying the severity of her injuries. Can I ask you a question? Have you had anything to drink today? Huh? Have you had anything to drink today? I just cracked it open. I spilled half of it in the car. Because I could smell no, when I mean, we were talking. It's not, it's not me. Sobriety? Or whatever sobriety? Yeah. It's not on me. Sobriety? Sobriety something. Ma'am, we're going to treat you fair and we're going to treat you honest. You shouldn't have put us in that position. No, unfortunately, when we have to make a physical arrest and we have to go hands on, then you got to go to jail. But you didn't even have to punch me. Ma'am, you were pulling away from me. But you didn't have to do that. It, I really like my mouth. Hey, did it work? Would you have rather been tased? Would you rather been tased? I don't even know what my okay. Well, it's not bad. It feels like it hurts. Can you call the number for me so my brother can come get his car? No, it's going to get towed. Right now, what, what's your address? Where do you live? Medics eventually showed up at the site. Sergeant Stanley, unrelenting, attempted to vindicate his use of force yet again. He informed the medics that Miss Hancock had put up resistance initially, necessitating the shove to her face. He further asserted that this action was preferable to resorting to a taser and that it aided in pacifying her. This display underscored Sergeant Stanley's complete lack of guilt or remorse regarding the excessive force exerted on Ms. Hancock. So we had one resist and I busted her mouth. She busted her mouth open. So let's just put some galls on it, wipe it up and we'll get her to the jail. Works for me. Grab some uh... Now listen, are you going to cooperate or do we have to fight you again to get you in the car? I want them, I want them to look at your mouth. To do that, we got to open the door. Matter of fact, just stay right there. No, we'll just come on this side. Okay. Can I put your seatbelt on you? Now, seatbelt's all jacked up now. Stay right there. No, I don't want to fight with you again. And nobody's trying to fight with you. You don't want to aggressive. You don't want to punch me in my mouth. Tell well, me now. I'm going to go off. Right? Well, I'm talking to you. Well, who cares? Bye. Can you send a medic or you can close the door? They try to be nice and polite and treat you with respect, and that's where you go. But can I do this, whatever that I didn't pronounce right? Sobriety. What's that going to do? We're not we're not saying you're drunk on DUI. I just asked you if you had anything to drink today. You ready? How are you, sir? My skin is fine. I'll be honest. If it wasn't you two, I'd probably be angry. Well, she resisted, pulled away, and I punched her in the mouth. So she's mad now because I punched her in the mouth, but she would rather, you know, could have got tased. But it worked. She calmed down. Well, she's not calmed down. I'm the bad guy now. All right, you ready? I don't want to open another door because she's she came out on me already. Uh, you got a trespass notice for me? I don't have any more. Okay.
As the medics tended to Miss Hancock's injuries, Sergeant Stanley swiftly took action, issuing a criminal trespass notice and citing her for the absence of a valid driver's license. Additionally, he uncovered an open container of alcohol in her vehicle, prompting him to call upon Officer Zellers to handle that matter as well. Remember that piece of paper we just wanted to give you? Right here it is. All right, so listen to me, okay? Yeah. Here's your open container in a motor vehicle. What all you want? Is this thing fair to identify? I don't know if fair to identify is what you want. You fail to provide information uh, to avoid a criminal complaint. Miss Hancock got in trouble and was arrested for resisting arrest, not showing ID, driving with a suspended license, and having booze in her car. Sergeant Stanley allegedly used too much force during the arrest, causing Miss Hancock to end up in the hospital. Chief John Porter said the cops tried to calm things down and that using force is only okay for self-defense. After a video of the incident went online and people got mad, Sergeant Stanley got put on leave with pay while the police department checks things out. Miss Hancock's lawyer wants Stanley fired and charged with assault. Stanley is now on leave without pay while the investigation continues and there's no new info from the police or the lawyer. On October 28, 2023, an officer from the Bluefield Police Department spotted a bus being driven by a woman named Yolanda Elliott supposedly disregarding a red traffic light. This purportedly provided the officer with reasonable cause to initiate a traffic stop. However, the situation quickly escalated and took a turn for the worse, as you will witness. The interaction was captured on the officer's body camera. You just run a stop sign? I mean, stop what? No, it was green, sir. It was, it was red. No, sir, my light was green because I pulled out right behind my bus. Yeah, well, it was red because because when, when we was getting ready to turn, our light was green, and we had to wait on your bus to get out of the middle of the road to go through it. Oh, no. Someone needs your license and the information to this bus, bus please. I seen your hand go up and I was like... Yeah, it was completely red. What in the world? Yeah, like the car in front of me tried to go, but they had to wait on you to get out of the middle of the intersection because right. our light was green. Because that's why I seen my bus go because we had just had the lights stopped. The bus might have been running it too. There's one in front of it. Might have been yellow. Where's my license? Did I have to bear with you? Okay, here it is. Completely red because it was it was our light was green, which means your light was red for a, a good five seconds. And because we had to wait on you to get out of the middle of the intersection for our, yeah, our bus. I, I was paying. I'm so sorry because I I mean the light turned green because we stopped at the red light. It was green. I mean it was red when we were sitting there at the red light. Yeah. I had to stop, and then the light turned green, and that's why we all went. Mm, give me a Mrs. Elliott is pulled over by a confrontational police officer for a routine traffic stop. The officer's behavior follows the guidelines outlined in Section 17C34 of the West Virginia Code, which states that officers should gather information and issue citations rather than getting into arguments with civilians. Despite Mrs. Elliott's claim that she crossed the intersection on a green light, the officer insists otherwise, escalating the situation by twisting the facts. This turns what could have been a standard traffic stop into a more serious incident, potentially leading to legal consequences for Mrs. Elliott as per the statute. Look out that way. Hey, this is 16 from Bluefield. Hey, hey can I um, talk to our dispatcher, please? Yeah, hey, Roger, just take a minute. Thank you. Hello. Hey, this is Green over Bluefield. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, can you, uh, with 16. Can you run a uh, triple I on that uh, yeah. Yolanda Elliott for me, please? See if it's got anything on her driving wise. 
phone call for ten four. Do you want her to give it back to you over the phone, or do you want her to yes. give it to you over the radio? Just over the phone. All right. Hey, just go up here and be like, hey, did you did he get your uh, insurance card and registration card and look at her eyes? Okay. On the chance sunglasses on when I walked up there. Yeah. Yeah, she, she just now put them on. She didn't have sunglasses on a minute ago. I told her to take them off. I mean, they, they look more constricted. At this juncture, it's important to highlight that the officer seems to have misrepresented the situation to the arriving backup, possibly in an attempt to avoid scrutiny of his actions. Mrs. Elliott is initially observed wearing sunglasses, which she then removes to inspect the documents inside her vehicle. However, the officer contends that she had just put them on, suggesting that her intent was to conceal her eyes. Such a peculiar misrepresentation falls under the category of police misconduct as defined by the U.S. Department of Justice. This misconduct may entail either a criminal offense or a breach of departmental policies and procedures. Yeah, I, when I looked at his, I made him look the same direction she was looking. And his, his are about a half a size, almost to a whole size bigger than hers is. Or hers was. She's got a speeding ticket. What did you stop her for? She ran a red I mean uh yeah red light we were sitting there and uh, there's a car in front of me and then I mean because she didn't have those sunglasses on until you pulled up and and the sun ain't even out right here it's and here. uh yeah her her peoples were more constricted than his were hers was go ahead, go ahead. Look up a Yolanda Elliott. Yolanda Elliott in Cisco. See if we have anything for her. Hey, Green. Hey. She's got a lot of things on there, but nothing for traffic. Alright, so no DUIs or nothing like that? Any drugs? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. Alrighty. I appreciate it. No problem. Right, bye. Bye. She's got a long history. Nothing do you why, why, right, why. <laughs> Keep in mind the update the officer got from dispatch, confirming that Mrs. Elliott has a clean record with no prior traffic violations or history of drug abuse. Despite this, notice how it doesn't stop the officer from essentially suspecting that she might be under the influence of drugs. This simply illustrates the officer's authoritarian approach when dealing with innocent members of the public. Miss Elliot, come here and talk to me for a minute. Why don't you turn and face this way for me, all right? Away from the sun. Okay. All right. Um, do you take any kind of medication whatsoever? I do. What do you take? Well. I want you to be honest with me, okay? The, when, I, when I ask you. During to the day, I don't take none. Okay. At night time, I take Ambien okay. and I take Percocet. Okay. So, how long ago since it was since you took the Percocet? Be honest with me. I'm trying to think. I took it about 8.30 last night. 8.30 last night? Yeah. Okay. I'm not worried about anything y'all can do. I mean, y'all need to do or anything like yeah. that. Well, this is, this is the issue I'm having is when I come up and talk to you, people okay. are, are really, really constricted. Okay. I didn't sleep good last night. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, sleep has nothing to do with your pupil size, okay? Okay. All right. Um, so, um, what I feel like we should do um, to cause less trouble for the people on the bus, you probably should call somebody and let them uh, let them come get the people off the bus real quick. Uh -huh. Because I'm gonna run you through the sobriety test, okay? Okay. And then we're, we're gonna go from there, all right? You want me to call my boss? Call somebody. Okay. Let, them, let them know you got a bus out here and you, you got to stop by the pool. Well, what, what about this bus right here? He's got to go. He's running another bus, so okay. let me call my right, boss. So and see. Make it make it pretty quick so we can get on the road with these tests, okay? In this situation, a cop might be crossing a line by pressuring someone to reveal their prescription medications. The Constitution's 14th Amendment shields people's privacy, including medical info. The cop insisting on total honesty could be seen as trampling on this right. Also, the cop's attempt to dispute the person's claim about pupil size and sleep deprivation shows they're not a medical expert. 
The person's privacy rights and the cop's lack of medical knowledge are the main issues here. Uh, it's just going to take just a little while. We're going to walk over here. We're going to do some tests on this line, okay? Yeah, the Percocet. She said it. Okay, my boss. Yeah. Anything in your other pockets? Turn your pockets okay. inside. Pockets. Oh, what's up? Staple. <laughs> okay, let me see what else, what else you got in your pocket there. Mm -hmm. Anything else, man? Oh. Just make, just make there. And I got money in my other pocket. Hold on, I'll show you that. You got your purse in there with you, or you carry your purse with you? No. Okay. You got any, any of your property on this bus? My lunch bag. Okay. You got any medications inside of that lunch bag? Yeah. What I kind got of medications my, in there? I got my uh, B12 and my okay. uh, Proton. You care if I take a look in it here in just a no. minute? Okay. In the footage, the officer casually asks Mrs. Elliott if she'd be okay with a search of her lunch bag. However, beneath this seemingly innocuous request lies the officer's attempt to turn baseless suspicion into potential grounds for an arrest. It's crucial to recognize your rights so that you can prevent overreaching officers like this one from intruding into your personal belongings and infringing upon your Fourth Amendment rights. The Fourth Amendment guarantees the right of individuals to be secure in their persons, homes, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. No warrant should be issued except upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and specifically describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Alright, let's walk up here on this line for me, okay? This is what I want you to do, okay? Turn, well, that's alright. Stand like here, okay? Put your feet together, hands down by your side for me, okay? Hands up by okay. your side, just like this. I've right. never done a field sobriety test. Never? Never. All right, well, there's a first for everything, okay? okay? You can see the tip of this pen, right? I can. All right, I want you to watch the tip of that pen with just your eyes only. Don't move your head, okay? Okay. Here the officer initiates the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, wherein an officer directs the accused to track an object with their eyes and observes for any jerking movements of the eyeballs, which are common signs of intoxication. Clearly, this step was unnecessary in this scenario, but the officer proceeded regardless. Alright, same thing, okay, watch the tip of the pen, just your eyes on, you don't move your head. Police often use the Romberg balance test to gauge if someone is impaired. In this test, the person tilts their head back, shuts their eyes, and tries to estimate when 30 seconds have passed by saying stop when they open their eyes. Cops look for things like swaying, how close the person's estimate is to 30 seconds, any trembling, muscle stiffness or floppiness, strange noises or comments, and if the person can follow instructions. But it's worth noting that this test isn't standardized by the NHTSA which means it can be challenged in court by a DUI lawyer. When I tell you to begin, all right, I'm going to tell you to touch your head back. You're going to touch your head all the way back, okay? Okay. Um, when you touch your head back, you're going to close your eyes. When you close your eyes, I'm going to tell you to begin. All right, when I tell you to begin, I want you to estimate the passage of 30 seconds in your head. Okay. All right, once you, once you get to 30 seconds in your head, you're going to tilt your head back down and say stop, all right? And that's going to be into that part of that test, okay? Okay. Let me get it. Let yep. me say yeah, this go again. Ahead. Yep. I'm going to tilt my head back, count, assume 30 seconds. Tilt my head back, close my eyes, assume 30 seconds, then sit my head back up, open my eyes, and say, say stop. Say stop. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. All right, so go ahead and tilt your head back and close, close your eyes. eyes. Yep. Right, you can go ahead and take your sunglasses off. All right, tilt your head back and close your eyes for me. Okay. All the way back. Go ahead and begin. How'd you count? One, two, three. Okay. Four, All right, cool. Good deal. Five.
37 seconds. No, you, you're good. You're fine. Was that, I mean, was I right on it? Well, just not right on it, but yeah, not right on it. But, yeah. <laughs> just to be nice. Right. Nine. Even though Mrs. Elliott successfully completes the initial two tests, the officer continues to point out her counting 37 seconds instead of 30, which is a very understandable mistake. Despite this, the officer persists in escalating the situation and opts to administer another test, the finger-to-nose test. During this test, the officer will observe various indicators of intoxication, such as inability to follow instructions, swaying, eyelid tremors, body tremors, speaking or making sounds during the test, and failing to touch one's finger to the nose. If multiple indicators are present, the individual could face arrest for driving under the influence. Next thing we'll have you do is call the finger to nose test, okay? Like I said, you gonna keep your feet together. I heard about this one. There you go. Well, what do you know about it? Kind of sort of like that. You ain't gonna put your arms out like an airplane, though. All right, but why don't you do? I want you to make a fist and turn your palms towards me, down just like this. There you go. Take your pointer fingers and stick them straight out to the ground. All right, stand like that, Todd. Instruct you to do otherwise, okay? All right. When I tell you to begin, it's kind of similar like to the old, the, the last test we've done, okay? You're gonna tilt your head back, and I'm gonna have you close your eyes. Okay. All right. When I instruct you to. Imagine that the tip of my knuckle here is the tip of your nose, and obviously this is the tip of your finger, okay? Exactly like this. You're going to come up. If I, say, if I tell you your right hand or your left hand, you're going to bring your right hand up, touch the tip of your nose, come back down immediately without me telling you to, okay? So if I say right hand, you'll come up, touch the tip of it, bring it straight back down without me telling you to. Okay. All right. You say right hand and I touch I'll, my yeah, nose. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to explain it to you as we go through it, okay? Okay. All right, go ahead and touch your head back and close your eyes for me. Okay. Touch your head back a little bit more. There you go. Left hand. Right hand, left hand, right hand, right hand, left hand. Okay, all right. Even after successfully completing this third sobriety test, the officer remained unconvinced of Mrs. Elliott's sobriety. Therefore, he opted to administer another test, the walk and turn. During this assessment, the officer observes seven indicators of impairment. These include starting before the instructions are finished, inability to maintain balance while listening, failure to touch heel to toe, loss of balance while turning, stopping while walking to regain balance, taking an incorrect number of steps, and using arms to balance. All right, what I want you to do, I want you to take nine heel to toe steps on that line. I want you to turn, I want you to come back nine heel to toe steps, okay? I want you to take the direction that I just turned, okay? Keep in mind, I want you to watch the line while you walk. Keep your hands down by your side. Count your steps out loud. Once okay. you begin the test, don't stop until the test is completed. Do you understand? I do. Okay. I think I do. Go ahead and begin for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Arms up. Holding on to the side of her pants. Oh, Mrs. Oto steps off line on eight. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there, you want to get her personal items out of there? All right, so turn around and face this way for me, okay? You can stand, on, you can stand right here and face this way. Face good. this way. Yep. Uh, all right, put your feet together, hands down by your side for me, okay? Next test I'm going to have you do is called the one-leg stand test, okay? What I want you to do, I want you to pick whichever foot you want to use. I want you to pick it up approximately six inches off the ground, keeping your foot parallel with the ground, okay? It's going to look exactly like this. You six, approximately six inches. Don't start until I tell you to. Okay. All right, it's going to approximately be six inches off the ground, parallel with the ground, with your toe pointed out. I want you to look at the tip of your toe while you do this test, okay? I want you to count out loud for me, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and so on until I tell you to stop, okay? Keep in mind, I want you to watch the elevated foot. Count out loud for me. Keep both hands down by your side. Keep both legs straight. Um, and don't don't stop the test until I say this completed. You understand? I think so. All right. You don't count. I'm just I hold my leg out. You don't count. You just tell me to stop. Yep. You just you just count out loud for me, like I told you to. Okay? I count out loud. Yep. Like I told you okay. to. All right. You ready to begin? Go ahead. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. 
Would you walk over here with me real quick, okay? Mrs. Elliot faced difficulties with the last two assessments, especially the one-leg stand test conducted under the supervision of a less assertive officer. Her struggles could be seen as reasonable, given that she is a 60-year-old woman who disclosed experiencing sleep deprivation to the officers. Moreover, considering she passed four out of the six sobriety tests administered, it appears fair to conclude that she is indeed sober. However, the officer had different intentions. So what are you going to have in this bag? You got any of your medications in here? You care if my officer takes a look in there? Oh, I don't care. Okay. I mean, I've got a bunch of junk in here. All right, well, just lay it, just lay it to the side and he'll go through it, okay? Okay. <clears throat> just lay it to the side for him. I'm about to freeze. All right. So, you said the last time you took the, the, the purchase sets was at 8.30? Oh, it was last night, yeah. You don't know when last night, though? Yeah, it was like about 8.30 last night. It was before I went to bed. What time did you go to bed? It was about 8.30. What time? How long but did you I sleep? But I didn't go to sleep. Uh, I was still awake at about... You took the Ambien and didn't go to sleep? No, I didn't go to sleep last night. I just couldn't go to sleep. I was tossing and turning. My... Did you take any of it this morning? No. No, I didn't take nothing this morning. I had to. No, I don't care if I look at it. No, I don't care. Why don't you do me a favor and just sit right here on this curb right here for me, okay? Did she gets to go home today? Oh, let me look. Oh, you're good. Come on. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there's a good chance that she might go home today and she'll have a warrant for DUI. Um, but I'm going to see if she'll go do a, uh, a blood draw at the, uh, at the hospital. Okay. Uh, we'll get her blood and then uh, we'll have that sent to stay with Two critical points must be emphasized here. First, the confidentiality of medical records is a cornerstone of privacy protection. West Virginia law explicitly restricts access to an individual's medical records without their explicit written permission. By revealing details of Mrs. Elliott's medication to her employer, the officer has violated this statute and infringed upon her rights. Second, the officer has further distorted the truth by informing Mrs. Elliott's employer that she was dishonest about the timing of her medication intake. This misrepresentation of facts constitutes police misconduct. Such unfounded allegations could have serious negative impacts on Mrs. Elliott's personal and professional life. Unfortunately, this turned out to be true, as you will soon discover. I arrested you, okay? Do what? Yes, ma'am. So I'm gonna give you an option. Um, we can go to the, uh, the hospital and we can have a blood draw. You can consent to a blood draw. Yep. And we'll go ahead and do that. I can do that. Okay. All right, I'm cool not deal. a problem. All right, I appreciate it. Yeah. Listen to me. You cannot. You have a job to drive people around for a living, right? Uh -huh. You cannot take Percocets and Ambien and drive. Then why did the doctor put it on my CDL? The doctors do that. I don't know why they do that. It's not legal for you to drive. They should At tell night you. Time? You should not drive, period, once you've taken that medication. For how long? It takes a while for that medication to come out of your come out of your system. Yeah, because I just had my CDL yeah. done yeah. last month. Yeah. Did you do a drug test then? Yeah. I What'd mean, I, I can show you my CDL. I have nothing to hide from y'all. I mean, what, I've never what, done what drugs. What come up on the drug test? Where'd you do the test at? Dr. Uh, John, where'd I do my CDL? CDL. What's his name? Uh, Princeton. That's fine. CDL, what did I do? Where did I doctor? Drug test, physical, did she do a drug physical? test? Neary. Neary. Okay. He, he done all of it. Okay. And, uh, well, you want to take your sunglasses off, put them in your pocket so they don't drop? And he did, he did every bit of it. And, uh, everything's listed on my CDL. Okay. And they had to get my, my, this, my family doctor to come back and sign off on it. Hey, well, they and dropped the ball because you ain't supposed to take it and drive, okay? Go ahead and turn around for me. So I'm going to have to. Just go ahead and turn around for chance when you back. Two critical points must be emphasized here. First, the confidentiality of medical records is a cornerstone of privacy protection. West Virginia law explicitly restricts access to an individual's medical records without their explicit written permission. By revealing details of Mrs. Elliott's medication to her employer, the officer has violated this statute and infringed upon her rights. Second, the officer has further distorted the truth by informing Mrs. Elliott's employer that she was dishonest about the timing of her medication intake. 
This misrepresentation of facts constitutes police misconduct. Such unfounded allegations could have serious negative impacts on Mrs. Elliott's personal and professional life. Unfortunately, this turned out to be true, as you will soon discover. Thank you for tuning into this video and supporting our YouTube channel, U.S. Corrupt Cops. We hope that through these cases you feel compelled to speak out against violence by corrupt cops and demand fairness and accountability from law enforcement. Please share this video, like, and subscribe to the channel to spread the message and encourage positive action in the community. Thank you for doing your part in joining the fight against corruption and violence.